And that's what God does with us. As we come to him, as we yield to him, he is enamored with our ideas and our, our, our creativity and our dreams and our desires. Um, as he sees you and me surrender to him, he's, again, he's suddenly interested in what we have to say. Our yieldedness and surrender make him vulnerable to our dreams, and it really does become co-laboring. And co-laboring isn't about our having our way with God. He's not a cosmic bellhop waiting to do your next uh, wish or desire that you come up with, nor is he going to rubber stamp every one of your dreams. But if he doesn't stamp one, it's because he sees another dream, another desire, another aspect of creativity down inside of you, and he's going to stamp that one. He's going to say yes to that one. God, dreaming with God unlocks deep reservoirs of creativity in each one of us. Every person has a different idea or different giftings, different talents. But in too many sectors of the church, creativity is on lockdown because people fear their desires and their dreams. Religion, cruel and boring, has taught us to run away from any kind of a creative impulse. But God has put those inside every person. Each one of us has a right and responsibility to express ourselves creatively in whatever area of life interests us. We are descendants of the Creator, and yet we want to stick to old methods for getting things done, old tired ways of doing things. But we ask God to do a new thing, but we expect Him to do it in a familiar way. This isn't just about ministry. This is about every aspect of your life. Jolene and I, years ago, we lived on a, a little ranch, and we had cattle and horses, and we had an old cowboy that lived on the property there, and so we got to do some pretty... He taught us to ride and rope, and man, we were, thought we were real cowboys. We, were, we ended up having to live back in town for 20-some years, and it was always on our hearts to be back out in the country. And I was sitting in my living room one day, and I just said, Lord, can we move back out in the country? Can you make that way possible for us? And we were in a situation where things were pretty tight, and it was kind of a pretty bold prayer. And the Lord just said to me, he just answered the desire of my heart. And he says, yeah, but we're going to have to walk on water. There's going to be some, there's going to be some tricky times, but we're, we can do it. And we, uh, a friend of mine, well, the Lord gave me, an abs- he gave me a price that we could get for our house. And my real estate buddy said, that's, that's $20,000 too high. You're kidding yourself. You'll never get that kind of money. Well, we did it, sold it through property by owner. And the next day, Jolene can tell you the story because she was the, the key player. Somebody stopped by the house, wanted to look at it. The next night, they came back and offered us the full asking price. They were the buyers from heaven. They took care of everything that needed to be fixed, the little things. Uh, I was a carpenter, so I had the house in pretty good shape. And one thing led to another, and the Lord brought us out uh, to a place out here off a summit loop between Turner and Jefferson. Um, It was just, just enough land for us to take care of in our old age. We get to listen to the coyotes howl at night. It's dead quiet. Um, you know, just everything that we could have asked for. We, we loved, we loved uh, in our younger years, <laughs> backpacking, hiking, skiing, climbing. We just did everything outdoors we could imagine. And the, right across the road from this place the Lord gave us was 600 acres. It goes up to the top of the knoll. We can look down this way towards Knox Butte and off down to the south and clear up to St. Helens and all the mountains down to the sisters, and, and I get to ride my mountain bike up there and act like I'm a, some sort of a silly kid, come crashing down and flying down there at 68 years old, like I'm out of my mind. And the Lord just gave us the absolute desire of our heart. And it had nothing to do with ministry in particular, although the Lord through that led us here, for which I'm eternally grateful. And maybe I'll just end with this, this desire as well to give you encouragement if you have anybody... Uh, it was really, we, we grew up in a church with a uh, family that had adopted a bunch of Korean kids. They were the first bunch to come over with Holt International's ministry, You're familiar with them. So it was very uh, familiar to us, very natural to us to, to have these adopted children around. And it was always in my wife's heart, especially, um, to, to do that. So we had two of our own that are sitting here today. And we had... Um, Ended up getting Dusty, who was down in Bethel, works for them, and for Jesse, who is now working on his CPA up in Portland. And um, when Dusty came, we 
maxed out every credit card. We sold everything we could to get him home. It was expensive for an adoption. Uh, but we still felt like this was the dream that the Lord had put on our hearts. And when it came to the second one to get Jesse home, we just, we just flat ran out of money. And the week came that we needed $12,000. And they said, if you can't come up with the money, uh, we don't know what to tell you. He's not coming. We were teaching Sunday school, and we were out of the, the adult service that Sunday morning, but the pastor had preached. Uh, this was Life Church out in West Salem. He preached on, you know, pure religion and undefiled is to care for the widows and the orphans. And he said that Richard and Jolene have this, you know, on their hearts to do, and, and uh, we need to bless them. And I was on staff, and I know these people. They were just very ordinary people. There weren't really any super wealthy people among them. And on a Sunday morning, they had us come up and hold one of the offering bags. And they came and gave us checks and money and cash. And I grabbed another one of the elders, and we went and counted up the money. And on a very ordinary Sunday morning, on the week we needed it, they gave us over $12,000. God embraced our dream. He embraced the desire of our heart. 